The Chicago White Sox lost to the Kansas City Royals on Wednesday night, 8-3, to in a season of painful games. Last night's loss was right at the top. The inability to create any substantial offense was once again a major issue for the White Sox. Johnny Cueto had a gutsy performance, notching his 13th quality start, uh, but the bullpen could not keep things in check. Uh, White Sox look to split the series on Thursday afternoon. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Locked On White Sox. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox. Locked on White Sox is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The White Sox need some help offensively if they are going to stay in this AL Central race. Uh, The bullpen finally uh, crumbled, and despite all the bad, Johnny Cueto is worth watching. Uh, Our Chicago White Sox are 56-55. and They lost to the Royals 8-3 Wednesday night. Painful season, painful game to watch Wednesday. If you were on the fence on whether or not to invest any more time and energy, money perhaps, into this White Sox team this season, I would imagine Wednesday night's game might have made that decision a lot easier for you. Uh, Despite all of the bad, though, uh, the White Sox are still within striking distance of Minnesota, and it'll probably be that way down the stretch uh, unless the Sox completely fall on their face due to the loss of Tim Anderson. Uh, It could go really either way. It just doesn't seem at this point that any team, Cleveland or Minnesota, wants to put the White Sox out of their misery. Uh, Sox just they just can't string anything together. Uh, here we are once again uh, talking about that 19 game stretch where the White Sox have been playing sub 500 teams, and the Sox are eight and seven uh, during this stretch. Before the game, a lot uh, to talk about uh, Johnny Cueto. Uh, boy, you know, he he had a gutsy performance. We're going to talk all about it. And uh, NBC Sports Chicago in the pregame, giving a lot of love to Johnny Cueto, as they should. Uh, Johnny Cueto coming into the game on Wednesday, uh, leading the White Sox with 12 quality starts. He's only pitched 15 games. ERA, his lowest since 2016. Uh, And Johnny Cueto had two of the longest starts by any White Sox pitcher this season, both eight innings. Uh, Now, there was a fabulous article uh, written by James Fegan uh, in The Athletic uh, centering on Johnny Cueto. This was in uh, Wednesday in The Athletic. Go back and read this if you have not. Uh, James Fegan does a nice job of trying to highlight uh, the beauty of Johnny Cueto, how great he has been to watch and the impact uh, on his teammates. A lot of quotes to get to uh, in this article. Uh, Really, really great. Fascinating to hear what uh, his teammates have been saying about watching him and what they've gained uh, from his outings. Uh, This is Cueto from the article. I haven't been trying to strike out too many batters because I want to go deep into the games. I know that for me, in order to do that, I need to find quick outs. Uh, Lambert and Kopech were talking about Cueto. 
Uh, it's very clear that there's another way to do things, said Jimmy Lambert. Uh, I was talking to Kopech basically about how watching Cueto has made us think about how we pitch and how there's other ways to go about it. You don't have to just try and blow everyone away or wipe guys away with sliders. You can move the ball around, change speeds. When guys are putting the ball in play early in the count, softly, you're most likely getting outs. And that's how he's getting deep into games, and it's incredibly valuable. Not only are you going to see him put the ball around where he wants to, said Kopech, he's going to put everything on the same plane, and he's going to change speeds. He's going to throw a lot of strikes. He's going to make an intentional pitch to generate an intentional swing to have an intentional result. And here's Lucas Giolito on Johnny Cueto. I love his pace and rhythm. I feel like he's always in control of the speed of the game. That's very important as a starting pitcher. Whether he's in a tough spot or he's cruising, he's in control. If he needs to step off and take some time to regather, get on the same page as a catcher, he'll do that. If he's on a roll, he's moving quickly and dictating the pace. And here's Michael Kopech again. He came up a month, month and a half into the season, and he passed me in innings the other day. I've always kind of wanted to be considered a strikeout pitcher, but but what gets you the best chance to win is not necessarily striking people out. Johnny's been a good example of that for us. I've really tried to change my approach for how I go at guys because of how Johnny handles it. Uh, and one more from Johnny Cueto himself. Uh, I try to change the batter's plan in the late innings then I try to throw more fastballs be more aggressive put more spin on my pitches that's just a way for me to play with the batters all that wonderful stuff Uh, it's such a great read again James Fegan in The Athletic that was Wednesday's article a lot from Ethan Katz in that article as well you can really tell these guys uh, these teammates respect what Johnny Cueto is doing Uh, The starting lineup for the White Sox Wednesday featured Harrison, Robert, Jimenez, Abreu, Vaughn, Mancata, Grandal, Sheets, and Lenin Sosa uh, playing some shortstop. Uh, There was a lefty on the hill uh, for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, This was a quote from Tony La Russa on Lenin Sosa's playing time. The better he does, the more he plays, La Russa said. There's an opportunity here. Um, Pretty cut and dry, I guess. I hope he actually means that. Uh, A.J. Pollock was not in the lineup. We've seen him in the leadoff spot lately. Uh, In another, you know, just another situation with the White Sox. When they're not, even when they're healthy and, you know, guys are in the lineup, in the dugout, they're they're kind of not healthy. And La Russa said that A.J. Pollock had a sore foot. Uh, He took a fall ball off of it Tuesday. Uh, he played through it. That's why he was not in the lineup. LaRusa said he should be playing uh, Thursday. Uh, Johnny Cueto got some help from the double play on Wednesday night, but I'm going to tell you why Johnny Cueto once again deserved a better outcome. Uh, more on that in a moment. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Whether you're customizing an engagement ring or designing diamond stud earrings, online jeweler Blue Nile will allow you to create a bigger, more brilliant piece than you can imagine at a price you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, Every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. 
So as I mentioned, Johnny Cueto got some help from the double play, and it happened in the first inning. Very nice, four to six to three double play. Lenin Sosa with a strong throw to Jose Abreu. Cueto only threw four pitches in the first inning. Uh, that really resonates with some of the quotes uh, read earlier from that athletic article. Third inning, he did get into some trouble. Runners on first and second with two outs. Bobby Witt Jr. ripped a 3-1 pitch in the left field. A one run scored, quickly 1-0 Kansas City Royals. After three innings, Cueto, four hits, one run, one walk, one strikeout, only threw 41 pitches. Uh, in the fourth inning, Pasquantino and Dozier had back-to-back -back hits to lead things off. Royals jumping on Cueto early. Uh, Steve Stone talked about in the telecast the need for Cueto to start making some adjustments. It seemed like the Royals were picking up on something. Uh, Grandal and Cueto did have some problems throughout the evening getting on the same page, and it happened in the fourth. Uh, after a flyout, Kansas City had runners at the corners with one out uh, looking for the double play, and he got it. Third one of the game, end of the inning. Uh, fifth inning, after a very challenging fourth, Cueto had a well-deserved one, two, three inning, uh, mixing up that windup of, of his, that stop and start. Uh, the ball had a lot of movement on it, especially to left-handed hitters, uh, kind of uh, starting outside of the zone, kind of at, at a left-handed hitter's hip, and then finding its way into the strike zone. Uh, Royals could just not square him up. Sixth inning, Sox offense had just put up three runs uh, in their half to take the lead. Uh, so looking for Cueto to have another quick inning, and that wasn't the case. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. gets on by way of an infield single. Uh, it was hit to Mancata. Mancata, I don't know if he – Stone said he lost it maybe in the lights or if it took a bad hop. Uh, but Mancata could not find the ears on it. It was a late throw. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. can run, so he gets on uh, by way of that. Uh, Salvador Perez splits the gap in right field. Witt Jr., a speedster, scored easily. Uh, now 3-2 White Sox. A ground ball to third. Mancata with a wide throw to Abreu, and Kansas City now had runners at the corners with one out. Uh, Cueto got a big strikeout, uh, stayed in the game to pitch to left-handed hitter Massey with two outs. Uh, Diekman was warming in the bullpen. Uh, Cueto could not get Massey. Uh, he hits a full count pitch into short center to tie the ball game at three. Uh, Cueto still stayed in the game at 92 pitches and got a strikeout uh, to end the inning. Uh, it was a gutsy outing for Cueto, uh, six innings pitched, nine hits, three runs, only two of them earned, a walk, four strikeouts, his ERA sitting at 2.91. He threw 96 pitches, and it was another quality start. That makes it his 13th quality start. And again, he has only pitched 15 times. Uh, for the White Sox. Uh, he is fun to watch. He is durable. Uh, you know, the rumors and stories of him during off days running the stairs in, in the upper deck of either Sox Park or wherever they are on the road, uh, that is impressive to me. Uh, he is having uh, quite the year, and uh, he, he's enjoyable to watch. Uh, that was a painful game Wednesday night, but watching him work, getting out of jams, especially after reading that article in The Athletic, uh, that was a real treat. Uh, seventh inning was not a treat. Uh, Diekman did come into the game, gave up a solo home run to left-hander Melendez. Diekman has been so good against lefties. That was a dagger, 4-3 Kansas City. And then the eighth inning, uh, talk about a dagger. This was just a flat-out a gut punch. Uh, Kansas City scored four runs on Jimmy Lambert, another very reliable bullpen arm, uh, and it was 8-3 at that point, way more than enough uh, for the Royals.
When your most significant offensive play occurs because the opposition's second baseman misplays a ground ball, uh, then you need some help. Uh, I'm going to tell you why it's looking bleak uh, for the Chicago White Sox. More on that in a moment. Did you know the key to sustainable weight loss is through your liver? The liver is the body's metabolic furnace. It's responsible for flushing out harmful toxins and igniting your fat-burning metabolism. But thanks to modern diets rich in unhealthy processed foods and constant exposure to thousands of man-made and environmental toxins, most of us have overworked livers. But now it's easy to rejuvenate your liver health and reignite your metabolism thanks to Liver Health Formula by Pure Health Research. Liver Health Formula contains eight liver-boosting super nutrients, all of which work together to wake up a sluggish liver and turn it into a toxin-flushing and fat-burning machine. No more bloated belly, no more uncomfortable digestion, no more feeling tired and low on energy all the time. And best of all, Liver Health Formula makes it easier to maintain a healthy body weight long term. As a listener of the show, you can try Liver Health Formula risk-free today and get a free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. Curb Fit is a safe and all-natural appetite suppressant, making it easy to say no to those naughty foods. Uh, this makes it the perfect complement to Liver Health Formula. Go to getliverhealth.com slash MLB to learn more. Again, that's getliverhealth.com slash MLB to try Liver Health Formula completely risk-free and claim your free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. Go to getliverhealth.com slash MLB now to get started. Well, there really was no offense, uh, despite the fact that the Kansas City Royals had a left-handed pitcher on the hill, uh, Chris Bubich, on the hill for the Kansas City Royals. Sox, of course, have been doing very well against left-handed pitching, uh, just not the case uh, Wednesday night. Uh, let's talk about the second inning here. Uh, Jose Abreu with a double to lead things off, Vaughn with a walk. So here we go. We've got two on and nobody out. Mancada has got a job to do, and he struck out looking. I, I have no idea what Mancada is up to. Uh, I have these conversations all the time with Sox fans, as I'm sure you do. And maybe you're screaming it at your TV or radio or however you are consuming the game. Uh, he looks lost. I mean, hitting sub 200, had that home run on Tuesday, but... I mean, in terms of this situation where he has got to get those runners over, that was painful to watch. Uh, Yasmani Grandal had a walk to load the bases with one out. And then Gavin Sheets flied out to left field. No tag uh, from Abreu. Uh, Lenin Sosa could not do anything. Opportunity completely wasted there. Uh, fifth inning, Sox had three hits entering the fifth inning. Okay, that's three hits entering the fifth inning, and were 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position and left five runners on. Robert, uh, with a two-out double down the right field line in the fifth, his second hit of the night, Aloy Jimenez with a ground ball to shorts up. How many ground balls did the White Sox hit? Boy, it just feels like every single time they need a clutch hit, it's a ground ball to shortstop or to third base. Uh, that was the end of the inning there. Uh, sixth inning, Abreu led off with a single. Uh, Andrew Vaughn flied out to left field. Mancata walked. So you got two on, one out for uh, Yasmani Grandal. He shot a base hit into right field. So you got sacks packed with sacks with one out. Sheets with a ground ball to second. Okay, this is the sixth inning. This is where it all happened. This is where the magic happened. Sheets hit this ground ball to second base. It's completely misplayed uh, by Kansas City second baseman Massey. The ball goes into the outfield. Uh, should have been an inning-ending double play, but instead two runs score for the White Sox. Uh, it was 2-1 at that point. And then Harrison kept the inning going with an RBI single, 3-1 Sox. That was the big inning. 
That was the offense. Gavin Sheets hitting a ground ball to Kansas City's second baseman. He misplayed it, and the Sox got two runs. Uh, just a pathetic evening. Sox offense, three runs, seven hits, three walks, 11 strikeouts, two extra base hits. Essentially, again, their only significant offense was when Kansas City's second baseman could not field a ground ball. With runners in scoring position, the Sox were two for nine Wednesday night, which meant for the series so far, the Sox are two for 19 with runners in scoring position. Thursday afternoon, the Sox wrap up this series with Kansas City. Uh, they're looking for the split. Should be a really great matchup. Dylan Cease against Zach Granke. Uh, we know what Cease can do. Uh, Granke's been around for a while. Uh, looking forward to that. Hopefully, the Sox can leave Kansas City on a high note. Thank you so much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now make your second listen the Lockdown MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the next episode, I'll recap Dylan Cease's outing and hopefully be talking about a White Sox winner and a series split. Really appreciate you making time for the Locked On White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Morawski, and until next time, go Sox!